Hello and welcome to the fourth session of the Online Academy for Social Impact from the DEC Erasmus Project, hosted by ITML. Today we will have a presentation based in one of our company's expertises, cybersecurity. We hope it will be fun to explore this hot topic through everyday life examples and some common terminology. Let's see some very basic terms. Network or computer network is a set of two or more computers connected together for the purpose of sharing resources. The internet that everyone knows is not just a device. It is a vast network that connects computers all over the world. We call the internet the global system of interconnected computer networks that use the internet protocol suite to communicate between networks and devices. What we see as WWW or World Wide Web is the most famous service of the Internet. It is an information system where documents and other web resources are being shared, and what you actually access through your browser. It uses a specific communication protocol, which is called the HTTP. The web browser is the application each one of us uses in order to access the World Wide Web. The Wi-Fi is a wireless networking technology allowing devices such as computers, mobile devices and other equipment to interface with the Internet. It allows these devices to exchange information with one another creating a network. In order to use the Internet via Wi-Fi, you need a wireless router to connect. Ethernet connects you to your local network through a router via a cable. If the network is not connected to the Internet, neither is your device. The electronic mail or email is a widely used feature of the Internet, along with the web. You can use it to send and receive messages from anyone with an email address from all over the world. An email client is a computer program or application used to access a user's email. Most probably during the setup you will ask if you want to use IMAP or POP. Always choose IMAP so that you will have the same access from all different devices. In case you don't want to use an email client, you can always access your email using your web browser. In the presentation you can read the official definition of what a cyber threat is. In other words, it is an attack through an information system. An information system is an electronic device probably connected through the internet. It might be a computer, an electronic device, a tablet, a smart device. So, let's see a list of why would someone do that. First of all, they might want to steal sensitive information in order to extort you, steal your identity or money, or even stalk you through your online activity. Also between corporations, it can be used as espionage in order to steal secret information from an opponent corporation. Hacktivism is a form of activism using electronic devices and cyber vandalism is also a type of vandalism using electronic devices. Cyber warfare is usually between nations in order to attack one another. For example, some years ago a virus was used to attack Iran's nuclear program. A list of common threats. Phishing attacks, which is a form of social engineering. It's called social engineering because it uses human weaknesses to exploit them and retrieve information. There is denial of service, SQL injection, zero-day exploit and DNS tunneling are mostly used to attack services provided via the internet to make them stop providing that service. Practically, as a victim there is not much you can do for these four threats, you can't access that service during the time that they attack and the SQL injection can also expose some of your data. So we are going to focus mostly on phishing attacks. This list shows that there are many different ways in which hackers may try to deceive you. The most common one is email phishing. Spear phishing is a type of phishing addressed to a specific person, so it won't be some generic message, but it will contain some true information about the user. Whaling is mostly addressed to a CEO or a CFO of a company as it is used to extort money. Smishing is through SMS, so you receive a malicious SMS. Vishing is through voice, so mainly through a phone call. A business email compromise is also an interesting case where the attacker is impersonating someone important from your company, like the CEO or your manager. The clone phishing and the evil twin phishing are usually using a normal email you receive and the second email seems to be from the same person, but it is actually the person who is trying to fish you. 
The social media phishing is using social media in order to contact you and try to deceive you. Even your search engine might be compromised and give you results that are not true. Many of you might have received such emails claiming to come from Netflix or any other big company you interact with. So, what is wrong with this email? First, the email address which does not seem to be a person working for Netflix and the sender does not refer to you personally. The title is quite long and contains unnecessary information, it has a forward part in it and if you check the link by hovering and not clicking, it will most probably lead to a domain that does not belong to Netflix. Other examples, for example from PayPal you are supposed to have unusual sign-in activity so they ask you to log in in order to steal your credentials. WeTransfer is a service for transporting large files. This message that is displayed does not make any sense, so that is something that should make you suspicious of this email, especially if you are not expecting to receive any file. Amazon is also a common target, as people use it a lot. As you can see the addressing is generic and the shipment is quite a large amount of money. The goal is to make you use the links in the email to see what is happening, if you want to actually check what is wrong, it is better to open your browser and go to Amazon website by yourself. This comes from a relative of mine. At some point Saba's email was hacked and since then I have been receiving such mails, with my name displayed as the hacker has access to the contact list. The email address is not correct, and the mail went to junk folder so that's why the text looks like this. I knew since the beginning that the mail was a personalized phishing case, as he wouldn't contact me via email and if he did, it would most probably be in Greek. A clickbait is a link published on social media, under popular posts comments, etc. which most probably advertises something that is quite desirable but hard to believe. Like the first two pictures. The links look suspicious, long and unusual and the supposed to be destination most of the time sounds like a scam so it would be better not to click on anything like that. The other two pictures are smishing examples. They can also be cases where you are asked to log into an account of yours for some reason. If you want to check if something is wrong again follow the normal process and not the links they send to you. The second one comes from an unknown five-digit number and it says from Victoria, Hello. I just joined the chat and I found your username. May I ask what are you looking for and where do you come from? These messages are charging you excessively and you will only find out in your next bill. Your network providers might be able to block these numbers for you. As you see, there are different types of malware. The distinction is not very important for a simple user. The most common one is the virus, which you can usually get from downloading a file executed in an email or some file online. We will see more in the next slides. There are some common virus symptoms from which you can detect that your device has some virus. For worms, the symptoms are quite similar. Again, there is some behavior that you did not expect or cause to your device. This is an example of ransomware. One day you turn on your computer only to find a message like this instead of the screen your operating system usually shows. The picture that you see here are what the ransom instructions look like. The common adware symptoms is that you visit some web page and you get advertisements from other pages. Another important term in cybersecurity is authentication. It is the act of validating that users are who they claim to be. We become more and more familiar with such processes every day. The most common authentication is the password, which is secret and only we are supposed to know it. The two or multi-factor authentication is another type. Physical tokens are not so common. The one-time password is quite common especially if you are using internet banking, for example. And there might be a separate mobile authenticator app where you have to confirm your identity. The biometrics is also a very secure and common way to authenticate your identity by using your fingerprint, face, voice and eyes. Passwords have to be strong and different, even when the account seems not important. It might be the gate to more important and personal information. On the right side of the slide, you can see based on the number and type of characters that you use for a password, how many combinations are there. 
Let's see a useful video on how to create a strong password. The most important thing to keep in mind is that under any circumstances, you should never share your passwords with anyone. Keep in mind to use very strong passwords for these three cases. They are the main tools you use to access all your accounts. A good solution to keep track of all the different passwords that you need is a password manager. It is a locked database where you can keep all your different credentials. The passwords are not visible, you just copy and paste them. It's good to use the two-factor authentication in any case it is provided. For most email clients you can enable this option. This example is from the Microsoft email client. Our company has enabled it for every once in a while and for the devices that haven't been used for some time. Some tips to browse safely. The website itself has some indication whether it's legit or not. What is the HTTPS? If you remember, we mentioned earlier that the World Wide Web Communication Protocol is the HTTP. S stands for secure. That means your connection to their server, between your browser and their server, which means the information that you receive from their server to your browser is encrypted. In general, if a website is not an HTTPS, there are many chances that it is not secure and your browser might warn you. You might actually have to even perform some extra clicks to access an HTTP website. If you have an antivirus in your computer, and especially a paid one, they provide an internet security service. So, apart from protecting you from downloading harmful files, they protect you from visiting websites that might cause trouble to your device or steal some data. We all like free Wi-Fi and internet access, but unfortunately it is quite insecure and we should avoid it as much as possible. This goes for all the devices, for example if you want to use your laptop, it is safer to create a hotspot using your mobile data. If you absolutely have to use a public Wi-Fi, then make sure you do not share sensitive information. For the computers that you use at your work, there are some extra rules in order to keep you and the company safe. Make sure you take all the protection measures you can, especially the ones suggested from your company. Keep your password strong, do not let other people use the computer and limit the use to work only. At your work it is also important that you clean your desk from sensitive documents, any indication of your passwords and USB sticks that might contain sensitive information. When you need a tool do not always install the first free software you find. In your work environment, if you need some software it is best to ask your colleagues, your manager, or the IT department. Scan your downloaded files with your antivirus. Pay attention to your Windows notifications. Take a few moments to recognize the publisher of an application. Be careful while installing or updating software asking for permission to change something or have administration privileges. All these are just indications. Everything mentioned in this video applies for your home devices as well. Even if the home is a safe place usually, it is good to have some extra protection there as well. A useful tip is to change your Wi-Fi username and password, as there are tools with which someone can find these credentials and use them to access your network and information. Regarding your mobile, which is the device we use mostly, always keep it locked, do not allow messages to be previewed on your locked screen, turn off the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth when you do not need it, practice safe browsing, pay attention to the applications you download and the permissions you are providing them with, be aware of the phishing practices as they are quite common on mobile devices. One of the most important things you have to protect is your data and information. That is the main goal of this session and everything mentioned previously. You can back up anything important to your personal cloud, as long as your cloud service is safe. Only share information with people who need to know. If we are talking about work documents it is better that you don't move or share them with other computers and, of course, do not leave sensitive documents in shared folders. In case anything of the threats above happen to you, keep in mind that it can happen to anyone. It is never shameful to ask for help. An antivirus might be able to clear some of the infections. Change your passwords while using a safe computer and do not load your backups until you make sure the threat is resolved. That's it from me. Thank you very much for paying attention. If you have any questions you can contact desarasmus at gmail.com. 
At this point, I have to mention that neither me nor ITML owns the audiovisual material in this presentation. Thank you once again for joining.